Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I bring you all of here to celebrate and reflect on one of the most important days of my life. An important day for all gamers, because today is the 25th anniversary of Doom! Let's get right in! Actually, you know what? No. So for this special occasion, I am playing on Nightmare. You can't stop me, I am masochistic! I actually originally wanted to do this in DOSBox, but that was not, um, feasible, unfortunately. Uh, the editing software fucked up and I had to, um, I have to, uh, unfortunately, uh, abandon that idea entirely. Oh god, okay. Uh, yeah, I fucked up. But anyways, Doom is one of the most legendary games of all time. Never mind one of the leg most legendary first-person shooters of all time. After all, it did start one of the most, if not the most popular genre of gaming of all time. Um, you can go, go look at reviews, you can go, uh, check to see what a bunch of people think about Doom, but... I think I have a bit of a unique perspective, because... Um... I didn't start playing this until 2013. No, 2016. God, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, that late in the game. It was 23 years old when I started playing it. And the thing is, this game impressed me. It changed my life in ways that no other piece of media really has. I don't... It's very hard to explain on what Doom does. But, it's also, it, 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 it's very hard to, like, accurately portray it. It's very simple. It's just a very simple and very, uh, visceral shooting game. It has a lot of blood and gore and simple but satisfying mechanics. You can run at 52 miles an hour. Um, that's, like, something that a lot of people find really funny and odd. And, yeah, it's true. Um... Somebody calculated the speed of the Doom guy, and he is about 50-something miles an hour. I don't know exactly how fast, don't ask, um, but I'm getting off track. Doom is legendary. Doom deserves to be recognized a heck of a lot more by younger people than it is. It is more legendary than any other first-person shooter ever. Time Magazine has listed it as the fourth most important game of all time, and with very good reason. I may be struggling here because, you know, it's in the highest difficulty, but, um, it's, it's very much a masterpiece. There's a reason that the developers, um, in software, in the early days, they did like so. They were so massively successful over other games. There were many, many other Wolfenstein clones, like games that tried to um, imitate the world's first recognized first-person shooter, Wolfenstein, but they fell short in ways that Doom didn't. And the reasons, believe it or not, the reasons are not limited to realism. Because Operation Body Count is a heck of a lot more realistic than Doom is. I mean, Operation Body Count does not have, um, demons and giant sci-fi weapons. However, it also doesn't have, um, 3D slopes or anything of that matter. And, like, I honestly get a little bit, uh, my, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to gaming is that people focus far too much on realism. It's not what makes games good, it's not what draws you in. Sheer realism does very little to actually immer immerse you. Atmosphere, like this, does a heck of a lot better of a job, believe it or not. And like, even for those who aren't really into all that much realism this game is obscenely fun it's obscenely skill based you need a lot of reaction time you need is that there's a lot of repetition involved but it's not like randomly difficult it's not unfair for the most part with the exception of the uh hit skin one set of fighting he gets now almost everything is projectile based meaning that you can avoid most incoming damage if you know what you're fighting against and even with the uh shotgunners and such that's still true 
I'm going to grab this shotgun. Wait, I already have a shotgun, so it's pretty much redundant anyway. But whatever. Nobody really gives a toss. Um, this game wasn't just ahead of its time. It was still able to catch people's attention, including mine. I, I, again, I played this when this thing was 23 years old. It still gripped me, and I, I can talk for hours on why it did. It's just so different from literally anything else. It, like, Doom 4 doesn't try to replicate what Doom did anyway, but even if it did, it probably would never have hit the mark. Because, like, a good- I feel like a good part of what makes Doom Doom is its engine. Like, even, like, the GZ Doom engine kind of corrupts what Doom was a little bit. Well, I say corrupts. It kind of enhances the feeling, to be perfectly honest. Um, for me, GZ Doom is, like, the best way you can play Vanilla Doom. Um, I did originally want to record this in DOS, but I couldn't do that. Because, like, it's a heck of a lot more different. The control scheme is just all over the place. Which is definitely excusable considering um, the uh, time that it was made. Like, nothing had mouse look back then. Literally nothing. And even the games that did have mouse look, uh, a little, for like a short time after did mouse look terribly. Like, like Duke Nukem. I'm sorry, I love Duke Nukem, but its mouse look is horrible. Quake falls, uh, uh, falls error to this as well. Um, uh, so yeah, um, that's definitely a product of its time. I also, like, it, but to compensate for that, you could, you didn't just, like, shoot into walls. There's an auto system in, uh, auto aim system in place, so it didn't get too terrible. I'm getting off track rapidly. Also, it was one of the uh, first games that like... No, that's not true. Never mind, I, I take that back. Um... But yeah, like, this game is pretty endless. And that's even not even mentioning the mods. I haven't even brought up the fucking mods yet. Um, the mods... I, I am so... I am so happy that I can get them for free. Even though I would pay good money for a lot of Doom mods, like, um, Brutal Doom and Fragmentality, I would pay good money for those if I could, but, um, yeah, people have, uh, changed the game in many ways and, like, made it better in, like, a lot of cases. And honestly, if you make a mod in Doom and it's, like, you can legitimately make it feel better than most modern games nowadays, and that is pathetically sad. I mean, to to anybody my age who is watching this and hasn't played Doom and hasn't experienced, like, Doom with an open mind, you will be, sh you will not believe what I just said. Mostly because I feel like you can't necessarily appreciate what Doom does right and what its strengths are. Um... It adverts to its quote unquote weaknesses, being a low polygon count. And as I said before, I don't feel like realism does as much for immersion as atmosphere. And this game has a fuck ton of atmosphere, and it's a really unique atmosphere. It's nothing that anybody else has ever, ever really been able to imitate. I have never played a game that has done this to me. And it's a very unique feeling, to be honest, playing to you. Just like walking around at the level, you feel you feel really strange. Like especially back in the day before I was desensitized to it, I felt like really. I, it's really an indescribable feeling. It's. Eh. The game gets to you, man. Like OG Doom. It's, it's obscenely immersive. Like, I... Well, I definitely know that I'm playing a game. Like, like you know, like every other game ever. I still feel like what I do in this world has an enormous impact. Like, I, I think, like, a good part of that is, like, the guns. And how, like, the enemies recoil after every single hit. They, like... 
on our like the hips here. Like it's stuff like that that really makes a shooter feel better. And I'm actually doing kind of well now. Um, yeah, I jinxed myself. Also, like, while I'm def I've definitely gotten a lot better at like talking and shooting at the same time. This is definitely testament to that, and I think that part of that is because of Quake. Um, this game is fucking hard. You need to pay attention all of the time, and that's another reason that I think the immersion is so damn is so damn strong. Is because if you take your eyes off for a second, you will get hit. And you'll die. My fingers are constantly doing something. I'm constantly jittering on something. I'm not watching a shitty cutscene or anything like that. And not like all cutscenes are inherently terrible, but they'll get boring after a while, inevitably. And I think that's a that's something that just Doom will never have, and you'll never be stuck. Okay, I died as I pressed the switch. You will never be stuck. Um, in front of a screen, not doing anything with your hands for any amount of time. Because if you do so, there's a good chance you'll die. And if you're not doing anything with your hands, there's no way that you're ever going to come across any progress. I can stand... I, I really hate that, like, because, like, games like Call of Duty, you can, you, like, have... To, it forces you to stand still, and it forces you to, uh, make progress that way. And in this, if you stand still, you're not making any progress. You need to do something. You need to work your way forward, even if it is just exploring. And let me tell you what, these levels, they're so fun to explore, because you're not just walking down a corridor, you're walking down a labyrinth, a labyrinth, which you can, not only can you explore, but it's, it's, it's actively encouraged to seek out and explore, like, it's almost necessary sometimes, even though it's also very detrimental to my health sometimes. See, um, if I was playing on any lower than difficulty, um, I get a mega sphere, a power up that's in that room, and so, which I don't need to grab, but it's still so rewarding to do so. And that's ultimately a good part of what makes this game good. And I feel it's something that 99% of games that even try to do this don't hit. Dusk does this really well, but. A lot of other games do. And just to prove a point, I'm going to try this on a lower difficulty, and I'm just going to warp to that map. Oh wait, no. Change, change map. Oh. No three. I don't know. Give me a sec, just to figure this out. You know, f fuck it. Int clev one three. Whatever, I can deal with this shit too. Just so you know, I can survive. That's the only reason I'm doing this. I am still getting hit because of being reckless. Oh, and that was really stupid because there was a barrel right there. I'm also fighting not having double ammo or a chain gun right now, but it should be a lot easier. So, you saw that um, area raise this right there? That's, that's a really uh, good hint to have at what to do. Oh yeah, also that. Another really good point to have, this game does not lead you by the hand, you need to figure stuff out yourself. And I would to kill that thing, because I actually figured this out on my own. If you run up here, you heard that click, that was this wall. That'll open. And... Oh god, oh dear. <laughs> Scary. Uh, yeah, you, you need to actively find out where to go. This game really does make you think, unlike a lot of other first-person shooters. This game legitimately makes you think. Um, 
the weapons I, I said they were satisfying in the, how they make enemies contort. But there's also I'm just gonna I'm gonna cheat like a bastard after that. There's a considerable variety to them. Um you have only seven, including the chainsaw. But here's the thing. There are no repeats. They're are all obscenely different. They act crazy different. This pistol, weak as hell. The shotgun, powerful, but far slower. The minigun. Rex face, but again, it it's not nearly as powerful as the shotgun. Sh shotgun would one hit kill these guys. However, it can't stun lock enemies, which is very effective at uh, murdering the bigger guys. This weapon right here. Rocket launcher, my personal favorite. Here's the thing about the rocket launcher. It's very, very powerful. You can wipe out the uh, toughest enemies in seconds. But it will damage you almost as much as it does them. If you, like, get too close. It does a lot of damage. So you really need to be careful with it. And it's, like, clever stuff like that that makes a uh, weapon feel ridiculously good. Like, it's powerful. It's more powerful than the other weapons, but you need to be skilled in order to use it. The plasma gun, um, it's also very powerful, but it fires projectiles, so it's not as effective at range. And then, there is the bullshit cannon. Nah, it's called the big fucking gun 9000, but it does that. It is ridiculously overpowered. The only problem is, is that it consumes a lot of ammunition. But, as you can see, it fucking wrecks, wrecks face, so it's not that much of a problem. Your fists, complete last resort. Still kind of effective, but not as effective as the chainsaw. Got a rocket launcher. This is this is where you get the rocket launcher, like... I think it's like one of the first chances you can get. Okay, there we go, got that. Grab another one to make this fierce, even though I really don't need it. Yeah, this is just basically what the chainsaw does. It just, it grapples enemies into a pain anim animation so they can't retaliate. It's very effective against pinkies. Yeah, these weapons are great. The enemy design is also pretty fantastic. Not necessarily as much as its um, sequel, Doom 2. Doom 2 has, like, the monster design in Doom 2 is so fantastic. Um, I honestly do believe that Doom 2 is a better game than Doom, but, uh, that can't really be helped. Because Doom 2 is, like, the perfection of Doom. It's almost the exact same game, to be honest, like, in terms of, like, the engine and the, uh, like, a lot of, almost all of the assets of Doom were reused in Doom 2. Except for, like, a few textures. Everything else, the weapons and the monsters, all of them were reused. Also, like, these levels are so freaking, like, they're well designed, they're not really all that pretty, especially by, by now, by today's standards, but, one shot, guys. Um, they're, like, they seriously make you think, like, the first time I played this map, I was, like, stuck for hours, it was funny. Like, um, like, seriously, if you haven't played Doom, it, you really, and you're a fan of shooters, what the fuck are you doing with your life? It's five bloody dollars. And you can, if you, like, get it onto a source port like I have, you can mod it, like, potentially, potentially infinitely. It's so great. Um, mods like Brutal Doom are, like, Brutal Doom is, like, the single most impressive mod, one of the most impressive mods I have ever seen. Project Brutality, I think, exceeds it by a little bit, because Project Brutality is ridiculous, to the point that when I started modding for Doom, I actually, like, made maps specifically designed with Project Brutality in mind, because it's just that damn good. Like, I would easily pay, like, if I had to, I'd easily pay $10 just for Project Brutality. It's so good. Yeah, I'm 
gonna go finish this level and then I'll be done. Um, Doom's 25th anniversary, guys. Love this game so goddamn much. It's just a good game. A genuinely good game. No DLC, no nothing. It's just this. Well, actually, technically mods are DLC, but not paid DLC. You know what I mean. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to let you guys go. As much as I love this mod. Mod game! Holy shit, for once I'm not talking about a mod. Um, yeah. That's Doom for you. Easily one of the best games of all time. In my opinion, it is actually the best game of all time. It just does so many wonderful things. No, wait, no, I'm, I'm thinking about Doom 2. Doom 2 is my best game of all time. This easily tops it at, like, number, like, 2? Something like that? 3, maybe. I mean, Dusk does a lot of this stuff. Dusk and Quake do a lot of these things good, too, but they're only trying to imitate the uh, classic first-person shooter anyway, so they have something to go off of. This game is almost perfect. At times it feels perfect, because I could not criticize this game. I literally can't. And I'm gonna go off on a rant again, aren't I? Sorry, the video's not ending. Um, yeah, I, I seriously have a hard time finding any criticisms about this game, other than, you know, your puny, terrible graphic complaints. Because A, they couldn't have better graphics back then. B, if you make a 3D engine, you can't stuff as many enemies in. C, I prefer sprites anyway. Project Mentality make, makes way prettier guns than any Call of Duty game ever. I'm just saying. You need creativity when it comes to gun design. You need to know your shit. And unfortunately, most modern games, their guns feel like shit. All of the guns in this game feel amazing. Yeah, I just cheated. But whatever. I rest my case. I just killed like 20 guys. Screw you, people. And yeah, I, I know this this gun isn't even in this episode and it's really overpowered, but I can only do like 20 shots with this thing. And you, have you seen how many enemies there are? That's not going to save you entirely. Oh, right, yeah. Regenerating health. <laughs> That's not a thing in this game. And to be honest, it really helps with... Like, I know this sounds like a weird... Uh, tie, but it really helps with the maps because if you had regenerating health and no items, like no health or armor items, this game would feel way worse than it is. Like, because like, again, these maps are so fun to explore, and a good part of that is because there is no regenerating health. It also makes the uh, all the fights that you have feel way more connected with each other because the effects of one fight will directly affect you in the other fight. And I'm back to 200 health again, because I knew about a secret. But yes, so I wonder, would I recommend Doom? Fuck yes, I would recommend Doom. Like, seriously, if you play on like the lower difficulties, this game is... Um, it's a hell of a good start for a game. I mean, it's rewarding to play. You gen like you get lost. You get lost so lost so fast without any story at all. And there is actually a basic story here, but it's just not it's just not given to you. I could I could go into another a whole entire video about that, but I'm not going to because who really gives a shit about Doom story? Nobody. Nobody cares. It's not what the game's really about. It's about you having fun. It's 
yeah, that's my uh, me review of Doom 20 of Doom 1990. I was a Doom 2016. No, that's for a whole another day. That's for when Doom Eternal comes around. Yeah, and I hope they give us some information um, on Doom Eternal soon enough. That'd be great. If they do, in between the time that I'm recording this and actually do uh, December 10th, then I apologize. I don't know about it yet. I'm recording this on December 5th because I have no time. For me, it's Tech Week. But yeah, that's my review of Doom. The OG Doom. I am not playing... My flesh and consumed. You can't make me. Anyways.